morning, everyone. Sorry I'm late. Uh, we just had the Mass for the Ascension of our Lord, so it was right a little bit late there. But uh, anyway, good morning. Welcome to TNT. And uh, today I want to touch on uh, the Ascension and also the question that people have, because it's actually connected a little bit with the Ascension, the question of when we die, uh, do we become angels? And I think a lot of times people... You hear people say it, and they hear someone who's died, they say, well, they're an angel now, they're, they're watching over me, they're protecting me, things like that. But the, there's, well, first of all, the basic answer when someone says, do we become angels? The answer is actually no, we don't become angels. Uh, because it's an awesome mystery that we're called into, uh, that the Lord has bestowed upon us. And that is when we think about today's celebration, think about the ascension of our Lord into heaven, this holy day for us, uh, even though we're not able to get to Mass still because of the pandemic, that uh, when we look at Jesus, Jesus who is a divine person, he is the second person of the Trinity, but who took on our human nature, that's why he's perfect God and perfect man, but as a man, he does not have, uh, he's not a human person, uh, he is the divine person, but he shares and takes, takes on everything we experience, takes on our human nature and redeems it. And that's why then in the ascension, he, when he ascends body and soul into heaven, now our human nature is forever caught up in the divine life of God. Uh, that it, we speak of how we, in the creed, he sits at the right hand of the Father. And though the Father is pure spirit, because God is, is pure spirit, so the, God the Son is pure spirit, but yet he's united our human nature to him. Uh, and it's an awesome mystery we think about. It. And that's when we refer to, in the prayers today at Mass, how where the head has gone, the body hopes to follow, meaning the body, the church, that each one of us hope to follow in that same way the Lord, that though we're human and we're imperfect, we're limited, we're sinners, that our very human nature and our personhood, our body and soul, first the soul, because we know when we die, the body begins to decay, and then the soul goes before God. But And then with the hope that one day we'll have with the resurrection of the dead, that our bodies will be resurrected, will be glorified as Jesus is glorified forever in, in, his, in his human nature, that we will share in the same uh, dynamic uh, forever. And that's why when people say, well, we become angels, we don't, because angels are totally different. They're just as different from you and me as you are from your dog, from your cat. I mean, it's just a totally different being, totally different nature that angels, angels are pure spirits. Uh, and that's how, the angels do not have bodies. That God, when he, at times he has sent angels with, the, like the archangels, with particular messages, he allows them to take on in a temporary way uh, the, f the image or the form of a body. For example, Raphael, that, uh, or Raphael, how do you say it? Raphael, when he walks with uh, Tobit, or Tobiah in his travels, uh, Tobiah thinks it's another fellow human being. When it's not, it's actually an angel. Or when Gabriel appears to Mary, appears to Zechariah. So obviously they see the angel. But angels don't have physical bodies like we do. Uh, they're pure spirit. And that's why with an angel, angels as pure spirit have perfect intellect, perfect understanding. You and I, we're limited in our understanding. But with the angels, angels by being pure spirit, they, the moment they are created, they perfectly understand. They perfectly understand God's will. They perfectly understand what it means to say yes to his will. And that's where we make that distinction between then with the angels who were created before us, in their perfect understanding, then they freely choose to then forever love and serve God, God glorify God, or they choose not to, and then it's forever a consequence, and they perfectly understood it. And that's what the fallen angels are. That's what the devils are. The devils oh, cannot repent, and they will not repent, because they perfectly understood and forever understand 
what it means to say no to God, to say no to his love. Uh, whereas the angels understand perfectly what it means to say yes to his love. And that's why the angels, they are there forever to serve, to glorify God. And that's why there's even different types of angels. For example, the scriptures speak of the, the cherubim and the seraphim. Uh, they're part of the heavenly court. We speak of the guardian angels. Uh, their particular role is for us to, to help protect us and help us uh, strive for holiness, uh, to help awaken us to God's presence and love. Uh, then there's the archangels, who are the unique messengers, and there's the, we speak of the three archangels, Michael, Raphael, and Gabriel, uh, that, where they played in salvation history to bring the message of redemption. Uh, uh, and Michael is the one that conquers the most powerful of, of all the angels, and that was Lucifer, that was Satan, who refused to serve, that he was created as the most powerful of all the angels, but yet then, because of in that perfect understanding, he said, no, I will not serve. So that's why there's a real difference between the angels. They're pure spirits. They will forever be pure spirits. You and I, we're human. We're body and soul. We will forever be that way, except at death, the soul separates from the body. That's what's, in a way, it's a, an unnatural act that occurs, even though death is natural for us. That separation of the body and the soul uh, from us is unnatural. And that's why it's, even in heaven, the souls in heaven, the saints, they are perfectly happy. They're glorifying God. They're in a perfect state of love. And that's the hope for each one of us that we'll be, we'll be experiencing that. But in a way, the saints still are anticipating that moment when Jesus comes in his glory. As the angel said in today's gospel at Mass, at the Gospel of Matthew, the very end of the Gospel of Matthew, the whole aspect of Angels telling the apostles, you will see him return just as you have seen him leave in this way. When he returns in his glory, that um, he's returning with our human nature. And so for you and I, this day today is such an important day for us, uh, this celebration of the ascension. First and foremost, all about the Lord. But also it's one that gives us hope, hope of what is to come. And it also fills us with that joy that the Lord telling the apostles, uh, it's good for you, it's better for you that I go. Because though he no longer is visibly present to us, now he remains present to us in a way that we can internally experience him. You know, think about with the apostles, they're with Jesus every single day for those three years. But in a real way, he's still, even though they're right there with him, he's outside of them. It, He's not dwelling inside of them. But it's once he ascends into heaven, after his great victory of his death and resurrection, 40 days after the resurrection, which is, would be today, as we used to celebrate Easter 40 days ago, he then ascended into heaven so that he can send us the Spirit, so that we can share in Christ's very life, that we can have, be conformed to the Lord. We can be part, we can be his body. He is the head. So where the head is gone, the body hopes to follow. And so for us, uh, that uh, in, in death, and we go, go before the Lord and we're judged, and then with the hope, obviously, uh, for every one of us, that hope that we then are forever in his glory in heaven, we're with the angels, but we're not the angels. And the angels, in a way, will also be in awe and a perfect communion with us, in perfect love with us in heaven. But in a way, in awe of how God in his loving will chose these weak creatures that he created, that they get to also participate in the heavenly court. They also get to participate in glorifying God forever. Uh, and that, that, that they have their bodies one day, uh, unlike the angels, that in a way, just the angels, what, part of the reason why they just glorify God, they see how much the Father in his love, in creating everything out of love, he has chosen this particular part of his creation, the human being, the man and the woman, to, to share uh, in his divine life as well, along with the angels. So, uh, and that's then the question also about Mary. You know, that did, the question, you know, did Mary die 
Because we know she's assumed body and soul into heaven. That's when we celebrate the Assumption on August 15th uh, every year. That there's a differences in the history of the church uh, that in the Eastern churches, which are, which are also uh, valid churches, uh, the Eastern churches hold to what's called the Dormition, that they held uh, that Our Lady fell into this, in a way, this deep sleep and then uh, was then assumed body and soul into heaven, that her body knew no decay. In the Western Church, uh, for example, in the Latin Rite, Roman Catholic Church, there's that many hold to that she would have died so that she could enter to the same experience our Lord would enter, enter into, but yet her body would not decay. But soon, as soon as she entered death, then he would assume her body and soul to heaven. So what we see with Mary, actually Mary is, what happens to her is, is what we'd say, this is what is our hope for all of us. Because our Lord, obviously, he's divine, uh, yet with the human nature. But with Mary, she's purely human, just like us. Just that she did not have any sin. She was uh, preserved from the, the original sin so that she could have the graces to be that instrument to say yes. But she still had to choose, keep saying yes. You know, she, did she have the ability to sin? Yeah, but she did not. Uh, but anyway, so hopefully that answers that, that question of, you know, do we become angels? The answer is no, because they're just totally different. But what we do become is extraordinary. And we should never think that's anything less, you know, because we don't become angels. Uh, it's actually that reality. God is actually elevating us because we're, we're not these pure spirits. God's elevating us to the same glory that the angels will have. And so we give thanks to God today as we finish up here with our TNT. Uh, quietly play a little Frank Sinatra because twice I've gotten flagged for, uh, for playing it a little bit too loud and because it is a copyright <laughs> song. So i got to turn it down a little bit so I don't get uh, muted. But anyway, hope all of you have a great day, a great Ascension Thursday. Uh, again, we'll be starting up Masses in our diocese. We'll be starting up not this weekend. Next weekend, we'll be starting on the vigil of May 30th. Still trying to work out all the details. There's so many details, actually, with all this that have to be worked out. And as soon as I be able to get everything finalized, I'll let you know. Uh, many thanks to, to all of you who joined me this morning. Uh, and also, uh, many thanks to my mom and dad uh, for the gift of life, for giving me life, but also, most importantly, thank God for the very gift of life, uh, the gift of faith, and for this great victory of the Lord and the ascension. Uh, let's see who else I can thank. Uh, I want to thank um, Apple for making the iPhone, which is what I'm filming this on, even though they made a lot of money off me with it. Uh, uh, also for Manfrotto, that's, they made the uh, awesome uh, stand here that my phone is on the uh, tripod. So, you know, thanks to all you. Uh, and also thanks to Tiago, because he's signing in here, he wrote me. So thanks to Tiago. Uh, he's the uh, seminarian living here with me, along with Deacon Steve and, uh, and Brian Connors. And uh, good morning to you, Nemezia. It's great to see you. It's been a long time. Nemezia was at Our Lady Mount Carmel in New Bedford when I was there many years ago. And that's it. Everyone have a wonderful day. Happy Ascension. Bye.